Right. Welcome everyone. Today is the uh, August 2nd, and this is our All Lives Matter call with uh, Alex Lloyd, David Peck, myself, Johan and Chan, I'll be assisting them, and you, of course. Before we um, put the doctors on stage, though, I want to say this disclaimer. This presentation is for education and informational purposes only. And since we're going to be talking about issues of health and well being, we wanted to make sure that you understand this information is not intended to heal or cure anything. Everything in the presentation are the opinions of Dr. Alex Lloyd, Dr. David Peck, myself, Johanna Chan, or you if you choose to share. You should always check with a licensed healthcare provider about any specific health concerns you may have. All right, guys, take it away. All right, I'm Alex Lloyd. The good looking guy in the middle in the blue is David Peck. And we're trying to help you and anyone else who would like to increase your emotional well being by 100% or more in the next year or less for free. We're, we, we think we can give you everything you need to do that. And so that's what we're trying to do here. And uh, Dave, I'll turn it over to you to start the topic. I've got a post it note to add, but uh, if you want to start, that's great. Okay, sure. Thanks, Alex. So, yeah, we're doing a mini series as a follow up to a previous mini series. And that was uh, the seven addressing the seven deadly sins. And we went sequentially weekly through pride, envy, wrath, sloth, greed, gluttony, and lust. And we're following that up now with seven heavenly virtues that are each designed to counterbalance one of the seven deadly sins. And we've done charity, chastity to counterbalance balance lust, temperance to counterbalance gluttony, charity last week to counterbalance greed. And this week we're talking about diligence or hard work or perseverance to counterbalance sloth. So that's number four. And we have, we'll have three more uh, weeks after this um, to finish this, this mini series. So um, I was in preparation for this, just reflecting on what we had talked about when we talked about sloth, the, the count, the other seven, uh, the deadly sin that it corresponds to. And um, uh, what Alex, um, told us at that time was that um, the three things that result in sloth, laziness about anything, have to do with having one, a victim mentality or giving up or apathy. The other is having entitlement. And the third is having too much pain related to something. So um, you know, th there can be, uh, this could be relevant to our um, diligence dis discussion. Now, when I, look at my own situation because we like often to reflect on our own personal experiences as an example of how this is relevant to our discussion. Uh, what I said last time about laziness was that in so many ways, I really have not been lazy at all. I'm really, you know, extremely hardworking when it comes to most things related to career and raising families and such. But the one area that I really felt that I was very lazy in and had a def major deficiency was that, you know, of building relationships. And this goes back to, I believe, my upbringing as sort of the good boy syndrome, uh, perfect, had to do everything, was everybody's best friend sort of mentality. And, and when that happens, um, and it's related to conditional love also, but when that happens, you know, I, I was not able to be, I had to be everyone's best friend. I had to be everything to everybody. And so I didn't really matter. So when it came to really building, you know, strong relationships with individuals, I wasn't able to choose really because first of all, I didn't really know what was important. And second of all, I had, I, I had no idea. I was, it was everybody, you know, so it was everybody and nobody's kind of thing. And so that, that's my area where, you know, I, I'm focusing on in terms of diligence. And um, one of the things is that, um, uh, 
for me, it's really, you know, what I've realized, and this may seem obvious to most people, um, but someone like me that's sort of making realizations, you know, at this stage of my life, you know, it's more than just certainly getting along with people and having chemistry. Um, it's really about having respect, mutual respect for what the person stands for and, you know, what they're about so that I would want to invest in them, you know, and, and really try to build that relationship. And so, you know, that's, and, and, and the money, see, in the environment that I was brought up in, it was really more about conditional love, you know, what you couldn't get out of it and, you know, money or something related to money job certainly was a major part of it. And so the relationships I built, I don't think were really deep in a way that I'm thinking about relationships now. And, but when I do reflect on who are my closest, really, you know, closest when I think about it, people that I really wanted to, you know, spend time with and make effort with it was the jazz musicians honestly you know there is there are no there are a number of them there are three that i know that were really my main ones one was a guitar player and then it was a drummer and another one a saxophone player that you know, used to play and go to sessions with and that kind of thing and so and i think that really in a in a deeper way reflected what i was what i'm saying now is that you know what they stood for you know and so you know, I feel the same way about Alex, you know, honestly, you know, because of what you're doing and what you're about. And I really believe in your mission and everything that you've sacrificed to, to pursue what you're pursuing. And so, you know, I, that's why I you know, would like to build my relationship with you and go from there also. Um, so uh, that's really my main thing. But, you know, today we're working on that, what, that area and everyone may have a different area and, and there may be different reasons why they're not diligent about it and, you know, have that sloth laziness. But, but mine certainly is, is what I just mentioned. So, yeah. And, and uh, what I know of, of David Peck, the guy in the blue shirt uh, you're looking at right now, he may be one of, the most diligent people you would ever see. Um, uh, star athlete, incredible jazz musician, world-class medical doctor and surgeon. I mean, Dave, it's almost ridiculous how diligent you've been. And that brings me to my point, okay? So to me, it started with a kid story that was called The Tortoise and the Hare, all right? And in that kid story, a turtle and a, and a rabbit, it might have even been a jackrabbit or a hare. A hare is one of the fastest uh, animals on planet Earth. Uh, I think for their size, they're faster than a cheetah, actually, unbelievably fast. But in the story, the hare, you know, goes, is super fast, but he knows he's going to win. And, and maybe he's a little bit arrogant, he's a little prideful, a little entitled, as David said before, or whatever. And so he, he messes around knowing I'm so much faster, I don't even have to really pay attention that much. And he gets so distracted that the hare, who is the, the, the turtle, who is slow and steady, or you might say diligent, beats it. He fools around so much that he actually loses to an animal that he, he, he could have beat 100 times out of 100, probably walking backwards and still won, okay? And of course, that's a children's story, right? It, it, it's not real. Uh, Babe Ruth famously said, well, maybe the most famous baseball player of all time, one of the most famous athletes of all time, famously said this, and he was talking about uh, sports, but also I think he was talking about life. And he said, it's hard to beat someone who will never quit. And uh, I have experienced that over and over and over and over and over and over and over in life, that the people that are slow and steady, the people that are diligent, the people that 
Don't get all worried. Don't get all distracted. They stay the course is a phrase you might uh, recognize. Man, those are the people that succeed. And however you want to define success, whether that's health or money or fame or whatever, um, the people who are slow and steady, the people who are diligent. Yeah, you know, um, I live in Nashville, Tennessee, and we have a whole lot of um, music superstars here. Um, Faith Hill, Tim McGraw, uh, um, Taylor Swift, um, you name it. I mean, we have hundreds of, of household names probably in the music business. And, and it's not all country music. There's all kinds of music here. That's why Nashville's called the Third Coast. And um, I used to think that, you know, all those people had everything together. And if I could only be like them and, and, and but I would also think they got lucky. Okay. And in the past, I would think that. They must have gotten lucky. And then I got to know a few of them. And David, it was unbelievable. Every single one of them I talked to, if you ever mentioned anything like that, boy, you got lucky or you must have had a break or, you know, whatever. They would, they would come back at you fast and hard, man. And, and here's why. I remember one of them I talked to and uh, everyone thought he was an overnight success, had a number one hit, became a multimillionaire. If I named him or the group, you'd immediately know who I'm talking about. And then he told me the story of how I think it was for like three or four years, he slept on a floor. Him and the other band members all were in this one tiny little place because they couldn't afford anything. And they, and, and they had used all the beds. So the only thing left was for him to sleep on the floor. And he, and, and he started telling me about how, well, maybe we did get a break finally, but we've been at this for like eight years in poverty every single day, playing anywhere that would let us play, talking to anyone who would talk to us. And, and, and so when I ask him, okay, so what you're saying is you were more slow and steady. You were more diligent. And he said, yes, absolutely. He said, listen, you don't, uh, one in a thousand who, who make it in this business got lucky. The other 999, they churned away and struggled day by day for years, which is exactly what David Peck did to be the world-class surgeon and medical doctor and everything else he's done, okay? So slow and steady, diligent mm -hmm. is, is, is the better way to do it. And then I'm gonna say one other thing and shut up. To me, the most important factor, whether you are diligent or you are not diligent and lazy and slothful and your life doesn't measure up to what you want or whatever, to me, the biggest difference in those two is, is your inspiration to work and to try and to whatever that thing is for you, is it fear-based or love-based? Mm. If it's fear-based, you'll tend to try really hard for a short period of time and then you'll get discouraged and quit. And then you'll go to another thing, do the same thing, go to another thing, do the same thing, another thing, do the same thing. And then 20 years later, you look back and you're like, what was that all about? I'm, I, nothing has worked for me. Well, it's because you were never diligent at anything. Okay, you were looking for instant gratification, and when it didn't come, you bailed. Okay, so if it is love based, then you can stay the course. Then, even when the pain of it hadn't happened for me yet, and it's been two years, you can still stay the course because you're not doing it for the end result, you're doing it for love in the present moment. And and that is the reward in and of itself. But guess what? That ends up powering you to the result you wanted or probably even better, okay? So 
are you trying to get stuff done or accomplish something from a fear place or from a love place? If it's a fear place, you're probably going to fail. Or even if you succeed, it'll probably be short lived or it won't be satisfying. If it's love based, it can be satisfying from day one even way before you get there and all the way through. And it will be satisfying once you get there. So that's my two cents, Dave. That's great. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Um, should, we start? should we go with the, yeah, the, the process? Yeah. Then we can have more time for questions. Okay. So we're going to, we pray, we request that all negative cellular memories, unhealthy habits and false limiting beliefs related to any laziness or sloth be removed and be replaced and infused with diligence and hard work and perseverance that's love-based. Amen. Amen. Okay, and the first position is both hands in the bridge for diligence. So stay in the course. And by the way, most people who are slothful and lazy, in my experience, have not been loved enough. And that's their issue. So you got to find love to fill you up. And you can love yourself, absolutely. Okay, second position, left hand temple, right hand bridge. Left hand temple, right hand bridge. Third position, both hands, jaws, both hands, jaws. Fourth position, left hand, jaws, right hand, bridge, left hand, jaw, Right hand bridge. Okay, fifth position, left hand jaw, right hand temple. Left hand jaw, right hand temple. Okay, back to position one, both hands bridge, both hands bridge, position one. Second position, left hand temple, right hand bridge, left hand temple, right hand bridge. Third position, both hands, jaws, both hands, jaws. Fourth position, left hand jaw, right hand 
bridge, left hand jaw, right hand bridge. Diligence. Fifth position, left hand jaw, right hand temple. Left hand jaw, right hand temple. And back to position one, both hands bridge, both hands bridge, position one. Okay, that's two cycles complete. Okay, let's do uh, go to acupuncture points, side of the hand, under the nose, temples, little finger, eyebrows, middle of the chest, index finger, under the nose, under the eyes, sore spot, middle finger, Under the nipples, under the arms, chin, middle of the chest, temples, 9G, eyes open, closed, open, Eyes down to the left, down to the right. Circle your eyes, circle back the other way. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's activate governing and conception vessel four times, please. Four times. And if it hurts, you're pressing too hard. This is also called yin and yang. Calms the central nervous system. You guys are probably getting tired of me saying that. Sorry. All right, and now custom healing centers. Let's start with throat. Please open and harmonize. If, you, if it hurts, you're massaging too hard. Uh, base or root on the pubic bone. Please open and harmonize. Heart. Please open and harmonize. Crown. Please open and harmonize. Forehead. Please open and harmonize. Under the belly button, please open and harmonize. Middle of the stomach, please open and harmonize. Last one, heart, please open and harmonize. And then let's do both hands, forehead. Both hands, forehead. Hmm.
both hands over the heart. Slow, deep breaths one after the other. Let the code process. When you're ready, look at your zero to 10 and see, make note of any change. And I would also check it in about 30 minutes. And whenever you're ready, open your eyes and come back to the world. And Johanna, if we have any questions, we... Uh, if anyone has a question and you're on the phone, you can press your, you can raise your hand by pressing star nine, or you can raise your hand if you're um, online at the indicator there, or you can type in a question, we can read that, and um, Alex and David could answer that. I don't see any hands up. Oh, there's one. Okay. Yeah. April. Hi, April. Hey, can y'all hear me? Yep. Yes, so I was gonna see if about the, uh, I don't know if this is appropriate for this this particular one, but I think it has to do with this um, this one. But if y'all could do like a quick little thing um, about the uh, the nonprofit, you, you, at the beginning of the, this sometimes oh. you say you weren't, you know, looking for people to join hands. Yeah, yeah. Um uh this is nonprofit. we're not selling anything ever as far as we know and we would love for you to join us uh, if we what the research says is if you hit 144 people who are fully committed that you will achieve critical mass and there will be no stopping it so yeah we're looking for 144 people and um this is it's all free. Okay, well, I I think I think um I was talking to a fellow at church the other day, and he said the Lord spoke to him about a year ago, and it was ironically it's the same person that I was trying to talk to you guys about. So I don't know, maybe God's working something out with with that little group there, and so I'm gonna go back and watch that video again. This is the he he watched the video also. And um, but I don't know, maybe, I guess we'll just see what's happening. <laughs> maybe, okay. maybe something's you know, happening there. But what I like to say, I said this the other day, I, I think whatever it is, it's having an effect. I mean, yeah. it could, it's not just us. I think it's other people as well. But people are now talking about, you know, like being kind to yourself and all kinds of things, being authentic to yourself. And I see this a lot in a lot of like mainstream type places as well so the consciousness i believe i think is changing so i think we're doing you know it's good and whatever it is i think it's i think we're i think we're on the right track definitely you know you know what i the way i always try to look at it you know people put so much stock in numbers whether it's money or a large number of people and I used to do that too, and it about killed me. And then a number of years ago, I, I spiritually shifted from that. And what I shifted to is one person. Can I help one person? And to me, that just simplifies it. And um, and and so, you know, uh, whatever that's worth. Yeah. Amen. <clears throat> All right. So, Susan, you have your hand up if you want to unmute your line. Hi, Susan. Hey, Susan. Johanna, we're having a coach's call tomorrow? Yes. Susan, are you there? Susan? Maybe she didn't mean to put her hand up. That Maybe. happened. Um, okay, so Kevin has his hand up. Kevin, you want to? Um... Hello? Kevin. Hey, Kevin. Yeah. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey. Hey. Um, so I just have a, a question and definitely pertains to this. Um, I just want to see any idea on how I can, like, develop a long-term mindset. Like, I have so much fear wrapped up. Uh, from the past and the present, you know, 
And it's just, it's kind of hard to develop long-term patience, especially around like saving money. And like all I can focus on and I try to not focus on it. I'm sure I'm not the only person that does it. And you know what I'm saying? In the, in these times and stuff like that, but kind of just releasing that focus so hard on it that just creates so much stress and worry time and time again, that it just, you know, it, it affects my relationships and stuff. And I'm on the road all day. And what I do for a living is drive. So like I'm on the road eight to 10 hours a day and I'm just always talking to myself and, and to God essentially. So like, it just keeps, you know, cycling uh, day in and day out. And I just have like this low frequency feeling, if you would. So any help with that would uh, be much appreciated. Dave, any thoughts? Uh, I mean, it's tough now it's with the way the economy's going and the value of money now, the, the, the Federal Reserve note, that I think it's on a lot of people's minds, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that's yeah. not unusual. You know, the, the, the extra part, you know, if, if there's anything that you can heal that's related to the worry that's involved, that would be worth, worth pursuing. But it's not uncommon for all of us, Kevin, right now. You know, it's just, it's on everyone's mind. I don't know what to right. say, Al, you know. I think, uh, I think one of the big issues there is comparison. Uh, back during the stock market crash of 08, um, I had so many clients that were so upset about money and I, I totally understood it. I totally got it. But um, I would ask them a question and it was this. Okay, imagine that you picked up your entire life your house, your car, your apartment, wherever you live, uh, your clothes, how much money you have, the kind of food you eat every day, that sort of thing. You picked up your whole life and all the, all the people in your life too and set it down in the poorest area of the world, probably somewhere in Ethiopia or something like that, where people don't even know uh, if they're going to have a next meal or even if they're going to eat at all today. Uh, a lot of places don't have clean water. That's gotten a lot better in the last number of years. But what if they put your whole life down right in the middle of that? Would that at all change your attitude on what you have? And I would every single time, and I probably did this a hundred times during about three years, Every single time after I laid that out, there would be a long pause on the phone. And then they would say, pretty much every one of them, some version of this, well, oh, wow, if that happened, I think my, my mentality would shift from me not having enough to protecting what I have because it's so much more than anyone else around me has. And, and, and as soon as they said it, I would say, okay, do you still have any questions? And typically they would say, you're right. I just answered my own question, didn't it? My own comparison and fear is the reason I'm feeling this way. It's not the economy at all, because for most of them, they hadn't lost their house yet. They weren't living on the street. They weren't homeless. Those were all things they were afraid of. But for 99% of them, not one of those things ever happened. And by the way, that is the, that is the study research on that issue, that about 90% of what people worry about never happens. So look at all that wasted energy. That's just sad and, and, and working against yourself. So gratitude, thankfulness, and love to me are, you know, even in the midst of all the craziness going on today, politically, socially, financially, 
try to try to steer yourself and you'll probably have to redirect yourself over and over because none of us really uh, grew up this way. Try to try to steer yourself to not comparison and fear over what's going to happen, but love, gratitude, thankfulness for what you have and love in the present moment. And um, I'm going to have to bug out of here. But uh, that's all for me. Love you guys. Thank you. Uh, go go see if you can get you. Um, uh, some more of that 144 so we can hit critical mass. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Love, you. Dave, love you, Johanna. Love you too. That was great. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and switch gears. Oh, let me see what we have here. Hold on, one question. Dr. Alex and David, I was talking, yet it did not seem to work. Oh, this, this is from Susan. Oh, just yeah. wish, I just wish to add me to the 144 regulars, persistent ALMs, and so thankful for this resource of themed trilogies. With me are a list of clients and friends now. Definitely, All Lives Matter are building regular users. Love, Susan. Wow, thanks, Susan. Thank you, Susan. Great. All right, so um, let's go ahead and stop the recording. If anyone would like,